ですが All right. All right, James. Fine. Depressed. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. How is the homework going? Is it fun? I don't know. I thought it was fun. Maybe not. Hello, hello, no battery. Hello, hello. Okay, looks like we're not going to have any mic today. Hello, is it working? Okay, cool. Uh, it's a red light, so I don't know where it's going to go, um, but let's just use it until it works. Uh, we're busy today. A lot of things to cover um, to be able to finish the homework. Um, so last time we learned this box model, right? And then uh, any HTML element uh, is like, you know, the way that browsers see HTML element is basically this box. And you have content area and padding, which is space between content and uh, uh, border. And then there's like a margin. Um, and you can you can see that how uh, in the assignment uh, how hard I try not to say padding or margin. Right? <laughs> you guys recognize that? Okay, I tried, but it sounds obvious. So I don't know. Hopefully, um, we looked at this some difference between width and height, right? Uh, basically, that's what it means is that width, like if it's auto, with the default value is auto, it will be determined by the parent. Um, size. Although like here there's a little bit of padding. That's uh, like I added padding just to make it better, um, make, make uh, like the better visualize the um, block. Height is actually determined by the content, the inner content. Unless you specify a specific number, it's going to be determined by the content. So what if the height is Smaller, I mean, like let's say you give a, gave it a fixed number and then it's smaller than, um, if it's smaller than the content, um, it's going to look like this, this by default. So we can use overflow property to make it hidden, make it scroll, or automatically adjust um, depending on the situation like the, the whether it's a fixed height or and then if it's content is longer it's going to create scroll bar uh, if it's not fixed height it's going to make it grow and so forth um, so I think we did this last time and then we looked at margin 
Um, so margin is basically the space on the outer part of the border uh, of the box. And we looked at this nice tricks to nice tricks to center an element in the middle by using what margin colon what what is the value? Someone said something. Did you auto? Auto, yeah, basically. So if let's say width is like fifty percent, if you set margin colon auto, it's gonna be it's gonna put twenty five on the left, twenty five on the right. Uh, yeah, and then like on the on vertically, it's not gonna add anything because because you know the again the height of the box is determined by the content. It should not do it. So one thing that will may may be useful for you for uh, probably it's gonna be useful. Um, for you is uh, box sizing property. Basically, it tells you how you are going to calculate the width and height. By default, box sizing is going to use content box, is like one of the value. Uh, so the box sizing property will have either content box or border box. And by default, it's content box. But uh, what it means is that, we're, hey, we're going to calculate the height and width based on the content area only. So if you're adding padding or if you're adding border, you're just making it uh, larger on top of uh, on top of width and height. Whereas if you use border box, you are including padding and border widths. Like the borders, uh, less, like border could be any number, right? Like it could be three pixel. Uh, I think it says the default value, but it could be 100 pixel, right? Um, it's going to include border size and the padding size, and then uh, like make the entire thing. I mean, use the entire box as um, as uh, to, to to calculate the width and height. So let's say you want to put four different things in a row, and then I, you thought you're just going to need to set the width to 20, 25 percent because twenty five. Times four is one hundred, but then because of the little thing that you add, like you may add like padding, border, it may be bigger than twenty five percent. In which case, uh, you could use border box and include the padding and the um, border to make exactly twenty five percent. Sounds like relevant. Padding uh, is the space between content area and border. So there are multiple ways to um, specify it. Like you can just put one number, which is gonna be all sides, um, four direction. If you put two number, it's gonna be vertical and horizontal. If you put four number, it's gonna give you, um, you can specify top, right, bottom, left, or you have a different kinds of property to specifically pick one there are one side of the box. Um, and the border, border basically is like the, you know, the border of the box, you can color it. Uh, the way that you specify is that you specify uh, size, style, and color, and style is required. The other two are optional. So these words like dotted, uh, solid, those are those, those should work because it's like the style is specified. Um, but you can specify like either color, I mean color could be anything like like red, or you can use hex code. Um, <coughs> and yeah, and then there are many other properties. Uh, you can specify very specific thing on the specific side um, using these sort of uh, Dash, or uh, a combination of like uh, um, you know properties. Uh, one thing that you probably need to have for your assignment is border radius to make it round. Uh, yeah. So let's do some demo of uh, 
of forward padding margin. I'm improvising. <laughs> so let's put create a diff. Hello. And then put the uh, CSS. I don't know if you can see. You can see that. That's good. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, put it in the middle. How do I do that? Set the width to 50% and margin to auto. And now it's in the middle. But I, I don't I have no idea how it looks like. So I'm gonna put border. Um, five pixel solid red. Okay, so I got this border and then this is the real, like a box of this div element. So it's always nice to have, like put some border, like if you're not clear uh, about the, the uh, like elements that you're drawing, uh, it's good for debugging for sure. Um, and then you can specify the size of it, two, and then again, I like salmon color. Um, and then there should be some other, other types of style. Dotted is one thing that I remember. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, any other style that you guys remember? Okay, border style CSS. Double. Oops. Go away. Double. Okay, that makes sense. That was groove. I've never used it, but let's try. Okay. Um, and then now we don't have any padding and margin. I'm going to add padding. So padding is going to be, let's say, 10 pixel. And then now you have this nice space um, between the common area and uh, the border. Um, I think it's better to put the text in the middle, like in the center. Text align. Everyone remember text align from the last time? Um, or I can put it on the right side. Um, I'll just put it on the center again. And I'm gonna make another one. So you can see it's back to back, right? Like it's right next to each other. So let's say I'm gonna have some margin uh, just to make it, uh, make some space between elements, margin, um, 10 pixel. Now the margin auto got just disabled because I have the more recent one. So what I'm gonna do is margin bottom only. 10 pixel now, like it's gonna use uh, auto for left and right, and then use the bot uh, margin bottom. 10 pixel for the margin bottom. Um, or I can do probably do these sort of things like top, top, right, bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, left. And then we can get rid of this guy. And then they have some nice background color. Um, Okay, looks like All right. anybody have any question uh, regarding part adding margin border? Second, how would I make a different style for the second dip? Yeah. Um, 
there are different ways to do it. One way to do it is give them some ID or class. So let's say this is first and this is second. Now I have a ID that I can differentiate and then like hopefully you remember the selector. So let's say this is gonna be first and then like uh, for your ID you have to use this hashtag I'm going to copy and paste, and then I'm going to use second, and then I'm going to use, instead of group, I'm going to use dotted, and green, um, and sky blue. Okay. okay. You can use the ID or you can use class. Um, Good question, but you sh uh, if that if that's not obvious, you should go to you should take the, like people lecture recording uh, that I had last Thursday. Uh, that should include all the content about the uh, selector. Any question regarding padding, margin, and border? Nope. Okay. Good. Um, <laughs> making a break. So we, we just saw border. Position, position is something that you need for diamond obviously. Um, and it's tricky. So pay attention and we're gonna have some, if you have time, we're gonna have some quiz at the end. So there are, I mean, there are more values that you can do. Uh, so largely like four different um, important thing is like static, at relative, absolute, and fixed. So position property could take these values and it like typically comes with these four other property, left, right, top, and bottom. And value of these four, it should be length and default value is zero. So let's go one by one. Um, static, which means, well, static means that the element with static property, uh, so if you don't specify position property, it's by default it's static. It just should be in, in the place that where they should be, right? Based on the content, based on the content flow, based on how you um, write the HTML code. So with some padding and margin between container, it should be here. Um, I mean, we're talking about this content too. Um, and then um, there's a parent container that contains three different container. And then this, imagine this like the, the, lar the larger um, a rectangle is like a web browser window, uh, which is viewport basically. So static is the most easiest thing, like the, the easiest thing. And if you use static, those uh, properties does not work. Like if you specify left, top, bottom, right, like no matter what value you have, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna affect any, affect the, the position of this container. Relative is, again, kind of tricky. The element should be positioned relative to its normal position. So normal, what do you mean by normal position? It, it is supposed to be here, like the dotted line, uh, the, the container that is uh, drawn with the dotted line. That's its uh, original position, but I'm giving it like an offset to the original position. So let's say if I said positive, to, positive position to relative, and if I put left 10 pixel, top 10 pixel, and then it's gonna move uh, the starting point to 10 by 10. So again, relative is um, moving the element relative, relative to its original position. So should I try that? Okay, let's try that. So I think you have this link over here that you can try, like the, the one on the top. And then I have that here. So I don't know if you can see well, but I have this nice, three container 
uh, green, red, uh, blue. So what I'm gonna do is move the green guy. So which one is the green guy? So green is container one. So container one, let's say position is relative and then top will be 20 pixel and then it's gonna move down, like move up, uh, go down to uh, relative to this, its original position. Uh, you see the other twos are exactly the same, right? Um, so let's say without this, like the red container is here with this offset, the, the green green box moved down, but like the red and the blue is exactly the same. So that's what I mean. I think that's what I what I mean by this sign is like other content will not be adjusted as if um, uh, as if it were in the the normal position. Uh, so let's try something else. Top twenty pixel about left, it's hard to see because can I make it smaller? Yes. <coughs> so relative 20 pixel and left. So it's going to move 20 pixel away from the left side. So what if I change this to bottom? What do you think is going to happen? Like if I, if I change top um, to, to bottom, what do you think is going to happen? Slide up. Let's try. Yes. Um, what if I put minus sign here? Go back to where it was. Yes, because like, you know, it's exactly the same as uh, like moving 20 pixel away from the top, right? Um, and then you can imagine the same thing with right. Minus and if you do nothing, default value is zero, so it should look exactly the same. Does it make sense? Thumbs up if, you, if it makes sense. Okay. Anybody has no thumb? <laughs> Thumbs down if you don't, if it does not make sense. Okay, good. Probably, you know, you know proper, appropriate uh, things to say. Uh, let's go back. Sorry if I heard anybody. So that's relative. Absolute, um, which is very interesting. Even though it sounds like it, it is called absolute, it is still relative to something. So. The element is positioned relative to the nearest positioned ancestor. This is tricky word. So, so it's going to find the ancestor that is positioned. What I mean by position is non-static. So what I mean by non-static is anything other than static. Like it could be relative, it could be absolute, it could be fixed, it could be sticky. Anything other than static. Um, so container two now is going to find its ancestor that is non-static and imagine that this parent container has property, a uh, uh, position property and its value is relative. Meet, that means that it's non-static, right? Uh, and then it's going to put uh, put the container to 
um, like and like ten pixel and ten pixel away from its uh, parent container. So I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, does that does that make sense? So it's gonna find ancestor. It's gonna keep going up to find an ancestor that is non-static again. Non-static means um, the property, like position property of which is not static, either relative, absolute, or fixed, or whatever. No, uh, and then the the other interesting thing that you should look at is that it's not occupying any space at all because it's uh, like right now the parent window got uh, smaller, right? It got shorter because parent window, the height of the parent window will be determined by its content and then when you use absolute uh, property, absolute value, it's not going to occupy any space. Um, so it's going to shrink and then uh, make the parent container uh, shorter. So let's try that. Um, so let's again try with container one. Position absolute absolute. What happened? What happened here? I think was it was so so uh, just to give you some. Um, idea like main is the parent container of the section and let's check out main main does not have a position property so it's just going to keep going up and at the end of the day it's going to find it's going to use body as a uh, ancestor but if we put position property <coughs> and say relative now its parent is non-static container. So it's gonna put um, like the, the, the green box is gonna be put uh, like, you know, temp uh, like in rel uh, relative to the parent container. Um, and then we can specify value like top left 10 pixel, left 10 pixel, and so forth. Um, then you can see that the width is determined by the padding of this uh, the parent container is not as big as the previous one, right? Uh, and then the the parent container got uh, small shorter. Um, and then you can. Imagine something like I'm going to make it smaller. Hello. Oops, not that guy. The green guy. Now it's here. The, again, width uh, and height is interesting. You can see. Um, oh, why is it? I have no idea why width is not um, as big as the the parent parent container. Interesting. What if I put and then put percent? No. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So it's, it knows the width of the parent, of course. <laughs> but you can imagine something like if I put on the right, looks uh, familiar, or bottom, again, relative to the parent container, the black box. Uh, maybe I can put it in the middle. Um, how would I do it? Maybe 40% and another 40, maybe 45%. Um, 
and it's gonna move along with the with the black box. So let's say I have to scroll. The green box is moving with the black box. Okay. Absolutely, is the, the trickiest one. Any question? No question. I'll get rid of this guy. And then I wonder if I can get back, get the content back. So let's say, what if I put position to absolute top going to be zero, 10 pixel, left is going to be 10 pixel. So if I do this, what's going to happen? Tell me what, like all the things that, that are going to happen. Uh, is that from where it is or okay okay yeah uh, what else is that what else what else is gonna happen how about the black box anybody else a smaller okay I see Okay, so now red box is on top of green box. It's some offset uh, because of the ten pixel thing. If it was zero zero, it would have been entirely um, covered. The black box. And then black box is shorter. Uh, it's even overlapping some of the 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 blue one. Um, and then. Yeah. Well, I mean, what if uh, if the parent position value is absolute? What happened here? Can anybody tell me what happened here? So I just changed relative to uh, absolute. It's a kind of a tricky one. So now main container is going to <laughs> look for non-static ancestor and then there's like main is the top level one. The, the only one above is its body and then it's going to put the container relative to the body. So body is like a the whole thing, right? This like the white screen, which you cannot see the border um, because of the projection. Um, so it's kind of ignoring the margin uh, order because now position is happy. And if I put start putting left 30 pixel, right 50 pixel, it's gonna move away from the top left corner Oh, what happened? <laughs> like top left corner of this uh, body body. Okay, any question about absolute before we move on? So if you cannot find. Uh, non-static ancestor is going to look look up uh, 
it's just going to keep going up. And then at the end of the day, if you cannot find one, it's going to use the document body as a parent container. So this is an example where parent container is not non-static, it's a static, so that it has to go up and then use the body container as the uh, anchoring point. Fixed, it's pretty easy. Um, again, um, it's relative to something. The element is positioned relative to the viewport, which means that the browser window. So here is an example where you have a viewport, the outer window, and then if I put like position fixed, and left is going to be 50%, which is going to be 50% uh, from this left side, so in the middle. Um, and then 10% from, uh, 10 pixels from the bottom side. Uh, and then can anybody guess why I draw uh, the box taller than it was? So previously it was shorter box. Now I got to draw it taller than before. Any guess? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So text gonna wrap, like imagine there's gonna be text inside. And like, because we are using smaller widths than before, it's gonna grow vertically. So let's try that. Um, let's go back to where it was. Okay, so which one should I use? Uh, container three. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna say position is fixed and then say top zero pixel and left zero pixel, which is gonna put this guy on the top left corner. Of course, there's some padding, inherent padding of the body document body element. If I put it on the right, something that is familiar, if I put it on the bottom. The, the other interesting thing that you should know is that it's gonna just stay the same, like whether uh, even after, even when you scroll the page. So it's like if you wanna have like some content that you want to fix, uh, that is always on. Uh, fixes are great things to use. Okay. Any question about fixed? Pretty straightforward. Okay. This is another example where I could specify everything, like in the left, right bottom top and then it's like, like it will determine the each side and then like content you would have to uh, like content inside would have to overflow if it's like bigger than the container. Uh, one relevant thing that we should know is the Z index. Z index is basically <laughs> um, anybody use Photoshop? More or less like, like do you guys know layer? In Photoshop, Z index is kind of layer. It's, it's going to tell you how high uh, the thing is, like you know, how the high the element is. So typically, without Z index, element is going to appear in the order of code. Like so, <laughs> if it's on the bottom of the code, it's on the highest layer. But uh, if you want to change that, like you can use a Z index. And then for this example, um, let's say you want to put this guy behind the existing content, you can set Z index to minus one. So it could be negative value, it could be positive value. It doesn't care about the absolute, like, you know, um, the value itself, it's just gonna compare two number and then put the bigger one on the top and then like smaller one on the bottom. Um, so uh, last time someone had a, had a uh, question about like, you know, 
uh, what if I like if I make a like a make a, this container transparent where I see something behind it? Like you know that was one question last time. Uh, we can use the index and then put something behind a content. Um, and yeah, we will test this guy. So let's say right now container three is on top of everything, right? But if I put Z index equal to minus one, it's gonna go behind everything. Um, let's make it even more obvious by giving main some color back from color salmon um so if i put two it's going to come back and then let's say I'm gonna say Z index of container two is gonna be <coughs> three. What do you think is gonna happen? Uh, JP, is that right? Uh, is that JP? Yeah. Which one? Anybody else? <coughs> Let's try. So container two is the red one. Boom. Nope. Why not? Because Z index is going to work only when HTML element is non static. So right now, default value for container two is static. So it's not going to work. The index is not going to work. So if I put position, but like it's it's, it's a good guess. <laughs> that was a tricky question. Um, position relative, and now it's going to pop up because now it's on non -city. So it's relative where it's it's like the relative is uh, relative to, to its original position. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure about the body. I, I don't know if we can go behind body. Right, let this interesting things to test. I've never tried that, but let's try that. Do you have time? Okay. Um, so, let me grab something from this guy. Section section is background color. I never tried that. So, uh, and then I'm gonna put position to relative so that Z index is gonna work. The, the by default Z index is zero, but if I put minus one. Or what? Is it gonna disappear? No, it's just always on top of body. Like body, it cannot be go behind, like go under body. <laughs> um, that's good. I, I didn't know. Um, so the value again, like value does not. Um, the absolute value doesn't mean anything. So it could be three, is above container three. It could be some number. Still the same. Some number. Um, now, the recent um, because it's recent in the code, like the, the, the um, it's on the bottom of the code HTML file, like the blue container is. But if I put it, if I put two, it's gonna go down. Question about Z index. Okay. Is it boring? <laughs> 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 
little bit because uh, because uh, you know already or I mean, okay that that's fine though. like I don't I don't care <laughs> <laughs> um, okay cool but for those who didn't know it should be not boring um, and we're gonna look at flaw which is again gonna be useful for your homework. <laughs> So, float property specify how an element should float, obviously. Uh, floating elements does not contribute to the height. Like, so, so imagine that you are using Microsoft Word. If you put image, what's going to happen is that you, like, you know, you're going to block the paragraph. Sometimes you want to, um, like, wrap, uh, wrap, like, have the text wrap around the image like this. Uh, then, then flood is going to be useful. So, let's try that. Again, I have this code example here. Um, right now, what I have here is basically um, main is the top container section is um, the one that you one that contains like the uh, um, text and it two images. So imagine that I want to um, have text like on this part. And then what I could do is like make the image float. So let's say, I'm gonna say, let's have, let's start with one image for now. float left and now it's going to like the image now is floating so the text will be uh, text start from the beginning before it was inline element so um, now it's like something floating on the left side uh, I guess I would like some margin because it's there's no space between text and uh, image. Maybe I want margin on only on the right side. It looks nice. What if image is bigger than um, the container? So let's say I'm going to say 500. And interesting. Hmm. Why does it not overflow? Does anybody know why it does not overflow? <laughs> okay, let me start over. Let me take out this main and then make it simpler. Okay. Maybe something with margin was happening, like doing something. Okay, so let's make this section, put it like, let's put the section in the middle by specifying the width and margin is gonna be, oh, so basically margin is doing the thing. <coughs> or is it woods? Okay, so there's something that I don't understand here. Obviously. So, so but basically what I wanted to tell you was that if the inner content is bigger than um, the parent container, like its container, um, because float uh, does not contribute to its height, we would have to use overflow property. Um, so I'm gonna say, if overflow is hidden, 
or auto. Uh, both of them works, but it's gonna extend the green box, the height of the green box. Um, and then put the image inside this, uh, this container. Are they using iframe? <coughs> okay. What I can possibly do is fix the height to 100 pixel. And now you can see the scroll bar. And if I did use hidden, I wouldn't see anything. I mean, like the, the entire, like most of the image will be hidden behind the container. So again, uh, basically the, the uh, main thing that I wanted to tell you was the float property. And let's go back to the original code. And what if I have more than one float? float? And then like, let's say um, there are two images. I'm gonna apply float property and put left value to both of the image. Now it's gonna, um, going to be right next to each other. Um, and then let's say I'm going to put one image on the left and the other image on the right. So I'm, I have this ID, image one and image two. And then you can see that I can make these uh, two images close. Uh, to the left and to the right. So this is again useful for text wrap, but also it could be useful to um, put block elements right next to each other. Um, so let's give some more, I, I'll give you some more example from the code that I've been working on, my website. My okay, so remember this guy. Um, so let's say, let's say I want to put quick links. This is kind of like a nice thing to have on the right side of the web page. Uh, what I can do is I can you know, uh, put this whole container into on the right side and then float to the uh, right side of the uh, parent container. So let's find this guy, quick links. There you go. And it's inside the content um, container, the div container, and then it's class is quick links. So I'm gonna use quick link and I would have to use dot to select a particular class. And then say it's gonna float to the right. So what's gonna happen is that this particular part is gonna to move to the right side of the container and then all the rest of the content will go up because like it's not occupying uh, the space. So let's refresh it. Okay, so this is something that you would expect on the web, web page, right? Let's put a border just to see Um, the whole box. Save it. Refresh. Um, right now it looks awful because I don't have any padding. Maybe I'll just have some border and have some padding. Padding 10 pixel. Maybe give some nice space vertically as well. 
Okay, so that was floating to the right. Um, but also we have this like a list of uh, YouTube videos. So let's say we I want to make them. Well, I mean, let's say I want to make them like you know right next to each other in this row. Um, so I'm gonna have to create a lot of video first of all. So let's. Uh, Okay, so right now it has list item and iframe, which is basically YouTube video, right? So I'm gonna wrap around those two with a container. Uh, and then let's say class is gonna be YouTube container. And then close the div. And then give some indentation. Uh, and then saved it. If I refresh it, it looks exactly the same because div is generic element that does not have any style. Um, oops, error, but I'm gonna make a lot of them. A bunch of videos, 24 videos. So what if I make them float to the left? So I'm gonna get this class. So I don't know if you can see well, let's make it bigger. Go to CSS file. So that class floats left. And if I refresh, what do you think is gonna happen? No one? Okay, again, I created a container for every li item and iframe pair, and then gave it a class name called YouTube container. And then in style.css, uh, I selected this, this class, selected this class, and then gave like a, uh, gave a full property with left value saved it, and what's gonna happen if I refresh? Okay, let's see. Ooh, nice. You're right. <laughs> um, one thing that I didn't imagine was like, you know, how, uh, I didn't know how big it was. Let's, let's, Draw the border, one pixel solid. Okay, so width is more or less, it looks different, like I guess it's not exactly the same, but like, you know, um, so what if I want to control the number of elements on in a row? I would have to control the width of the container. Um, so right now, the, unfortunately, the the YouTube has fixed width. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. How? I'm gonna just replace them with blank. Saved it. If I refresh, it just give me random width that I don't have control over. So let's say iframe, oh, okay. So let's control the parent container. Width is gonna be 25%. And obviously YouTube does not, like iframe does not um, conform with the width of the parent. So iframe, I'm gonna say width, hey, width, follow the width of parents, width of the parents, which is gonna be 100%. Uh, listen to your parents. 
and then it's going to be smaller, which is good. But again, why I don't see four? Why do I see three? Because like mathematically, twenty five percent is supposed to be four of them. Four like four times twenty five percent is longer. Uh, why don't I? Why don't I see four and only see three of them? Because of the border, because the border is create, like creating extra space. So let's get rid of border just for the sake of testing. Refresh. Now I get four. What if I want to have a border? I can have a border, but then remember this box sizing thing where it's going to calculate the width and height, uh, including padding and border. So I'm going to say border box, save it, refresh. Now I have border, but then I still get four elements. I want to get some padding, um, maybe three pixel. Now I get some padding and then I can get finally get rid of border and then it's going to look nicely, <coughs> even though like, you know, there's a line break in the title. So why don't I just make it three in a row? So three, 33.3. Three. Uh, it's not enough because like there's two lines in um, this particular thing. What should I do? I can probably make the whole thing larger, 75%. Now it's a good enough space for title. And then remember, I can get rid of this. Uh, oh, where'd it go? Get rid of the number by list style type equal to none. And now all the numbers are gone. Maybe a little bit more padding. Okay, so that's how float could be useful. Where when you want to like put elements right next to each other, like if you put uh, like all the elements um, float to the left side of the parent element parent pair, um, it's gonna like you know keep adding to uh, the row. Depending on its depending on its width, so you have to specify width as well. Um, and then there's like a more advanced technique like flex ball or is it flex flex grab grid, um, and we're gonna look at it later. But hopefully, this is good enough for the homework. Any question about floating? Oh, I did some demo. And I have time. Any question? Good news is that today's lecture recording, I'm recording the lecture and I'm gonna post it. So you can see it if you want, if it was too fast. Um, you have the links to the uh, Let's to the, the code pen example. Any question about the uh, content or material, like uh, lecture material or assignment two? I think they, at least um, the version that I wrote for the assignment two, like uh, all the properties that I uh, have in the key like it was at least introduced in the uh, lecture, like a lecture science. So there's a way to do it. Like otherwise, like you should be able to find like a search online and uh, figure it out. But like, you know, in general, it should be fine. Okay, do we have time for quiz?
it's due tonight. <laughs> so you can go if you want to, but it's published. It's going to be available until tonight. It's tricky. You have only one chance. Uh, and I would like you to get it right. So uh, I'm giving you enough time. Um, you can do it right now. You can come here and come like, in front for a question. Or you can leave. But don't forget, you know, there's a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I give you that time is not to force you to get it right, not, not to not force you to forget it. Thank you. Is my stick working? <laughs> 